In today's video, we're going to walk through how to set up and create a simple pipeline in HubSpot. Before we jump into it, I'm Andrew, founder of RevFuel. We're a HubSpot Gold partner. Uh, I've been using HubSpot as a sales rep, uh, sales manager, sales ops, and obviously an agency owner for almost eight years now, uh, having worked with over 100 different companies to help build out and scale their sales and market and ultimately help them drive more leads, revenue, and, and automate using HubSpot. And a pipeline is super important uh, to be able to manage all of your opportunities. Um, some people decide, you know, have different reasons for when they want to create a deal versus not create a deal. But today we're just going to briefly walk through how you actually set up a pipeline in HubSpot to manage these. So um, looking at the screen in HubSpot, um, as you can see, we already have a pipeline set up in our test account. Um, to access this uh, in the newer version of HubSpot, you would go over to the CRM, you'd go to deals. And this will bring you to, again, uh, the board or Kanban view, or you have a list view. Again, not a big fan of the list view, I'm more of a visual person. Um, and it goes typically left to right. Um, and the way to set up a pipeline and the different stages is typically whatever the major steps of your sales process are. One mistake we see with a lot of our clients when we come in and help clean up their HubSpot is usually they went ahead and created a stage for like every single activity where it's a meeting book, they have a stage, which is good. Um, meeting completed, that's fine. Even this one, this no-show here, I wouldn't necessarily do this normally. Um, then they'll even have a stage for like send an email, send a proposal, like it's too many stages. Um, you know, typically it's what are the major steps of your sales process? So if maybe you're a, a, a SaaS company, your stages might be, you know, once you qualify, um, you know, you might want to set up your first stage for the discovery stage. Uh, and then maybe your next stage or stages is related to the actual demo. And then maybe after that, maybe there's, uh, you know, a little bit of follow-up, maybe there's a proposal or a quote sent, and then it's one lost. Or maybe if you're an agency, maybe you're just a one call close where you have a, you know, your discovery call um, that you schedule, you complete it, proposal, contract, one lost. So we'll go ahead and set up a pipeline for uh, the agency model, which again, could be kind of similar to like a, a lower ticket SaaS model as well. To go ahead and, and change these stages to how we want, you're going to go to the gear icon. You're going to go to settings. You're going to go down to objects on our left side. We're going to go to deals, pipelines. And again, setting up HubSpot, you probably already have, um, you know, some different stages that were set up. So you'll go in, you can always create multiple pipelines. Um, you know, typically reasons why we would do that is, uh, you know, if maybe it's new business first, maybe expansion and their expansion or account management is a different process. Um, I've seen sometimes companies do it for, uh, you know, maybe if, if it's different products, um, you know, where just the sales process is vastly different. So it kind of depends on the scenario. But again, for our agency or basic SaaS model, we're going to go ahead and start and, you know, we might do something like discovery call. scheduled. Um, typically, I'm not a big fan of doing meeting no show. I'll walk through briefly how we kind of keep track of that. Um, we got to delete some deals Our deals are deleted. We can go ahead and say discovery call. Skip. Sometimes, you know, again, depending on scenarios, maybe I would do discovery call completed. Um, or, you know, usually if the next step is, you know, typically I have a discovery call, you know, maybe it's proposal, you know, if you complete the call and they, you know, you don't need a proposal because they're not qualified, then you might move into lost, um, you know, proposal. And then maybe we have like a contract sent. Um, you know, maybe if not, you complete a bunch of calls, but not everyone is worth a proposal. You know, I could always see adding in a discovery call completed, you know, then we drag that up here. Um, 
You could do that where maybe you, you get a bunch of calls, but not everyone's worth your time creating a custom proposal. Um, and then, you know, contract sent, one lost. Don't do a nurture stage. You know, typically for me, if it's nurture, it, it's you're holding on for deal life. It's it's not a nurture. It's a loss. You can always move it to lost and still create a task to follow up. If it's not, you know, a good rule of thumb is if your sales cycle is, you know, 30 days. One, if you don't date on that, you need to figure that out. But if, if you do have data on it and you know typically your sales cycle is 30 days and, you know, they're, they're not ready right now. Hey, fall up in three months. Right now, that is a lost deal for now. Move it to loss. You can always bring it back or create a new one. So we have our stages set up. Uh, we can set some deal probabilities for forecasting. You know, maybe, again, this is you, right now, you're probably not going to know these numbers, but eventually as you start knowing what are my conversion rates from different stages, then you can actually set accurate deal probabilities and then actually forecast. For now, maybe we'll say discovery call schedules, 20%, they'll close. Uh, maybe completed is a 40%. We know if we get to send a proposal that's 60, you know, contract sense 90. Maybe we would adjust this a little more from, you know, you know, maybe we'd say 40, 60, I don't know, 80. Um, then we can go ahead and set some requirements. Maybe at certain stages, we need to collect certain data. Um, so maybe in the proposal stage, you know, there's a certain property that we would need to collect. Um, I don't know, maybe at this point we need to put the amount in, we could go ahead and put that in. In this case, this plan is not on sales pro, so I can't require it. It would just pop up, but it wouldn't be required. And then maybe for lost, again, a great example I always like to do is, is the reason. What's our close loss reason? Put that in there. I'm a big fan of not using HubSpot's version. I like to create a drop down. Otherwise, you're going to have like five different versions of budget, no money. Just create a drop down of your top five. I mean, really, it's probably like five to maybe up to 10 potentially reasons why a deal would be lost. I would create those so you can actually track and see the data on that. And then we have our pipeline set up. Um, and if we do obviously have, um, uh, if we do have sales pro, we can go ahead, uh, you know, and set up some automations, which will cover in, uh, another video, but in terms of just a basic pipeline, that's, that's about it. Um, you know, you could go ahead and obviously, uh, do some customizations on the layout of a deal. Um, you know, maybe if we look at a deal, this would be the main information. You know, we can always adjust and pull certain info that we do or don't want in here. Um, we can also go ahead and add, uh, if we want to change like the layout of, of how a Just remembering where it was moved to. Hmm. Move stuff around recently, HubSpot did. Um, it was over here uh, in board options. So we could always edit the cards, like how maybe uh, what's showing up, you know, how, at what point do we want to maybe market deals inactive? There's a few other um, settings that we can go ahead and do in board options as well. Um, but we can go ahead and obviously there's no deals in here. We can create a deal. Discover call scheduled. We could associate this deal to obviously the contact associated to the company, which I recommend doing. Um, and then we'll go ahead and actually have a deal. Um, Let's go back. So we now have a deal in our discovery call scheduled stage. If we added an amount, we could actually see that total down here. Let's say, hey, on average, we charge 3K. So we could go ahead and just by default have deals be created as 3K. And again, using automation, you can set a lot of the stuff. You could set the close date, hey, on average, you know, again, 30 days. So we would say, you know, August 22nd. 
Um, we could automatically set the company name, the contact name, the date the meeting was booked, the date of the meeting, a few other things as well. Again, because we're not in the sales pro version in our test account, we can't do those things. Um, but we could see everything in our total here. We could see what's in uh, discovery call completed, um, you know, proposals, etc. So that's it. Pretty straightforward in terms of setting up a pipeline.